Happy morning dear students. Welcome to Science Online class. In today's session we are going to revise a very interesting chapter in biology. Lesson 2 The Cell. In lesson 1 we studied that all living beings are made up of cells and it is inside the cells that all the life processes that is the life functions and many reactions happen in our body. So that's why we say cell as the basic structural and functional unit of life and there are two type of organisms they are unicellular organism and multicellular organisms so what are unicellular organisms organisms like bacteria yeast and amoebas they are made up of just a single cell and they are called as unicellular organism whereas organisms such as human beings cows goat tree, lion, a tiger, everything they are made up of a large number of cells and they are called as multicellular organism. And how was the cell discovered? The word cell was coined by Robert Hooke, an English scientist. He designed a microscope to observe the minute objects. So what is microscope? Microscope is an instrument we use to observe or to see the microorganisms. While observing a thin slice of cork, a dry cork one day, he found that it was made up of some chambers which he called as cells. And since cork has only dead cells, he saw only the walls of the dead cells and he was not able to see what lies inside the living cell. But after many years, many scientists, they began to discover many newer type of microscope through which they were able to see what is present inside a living cell. Students, this is a picture of a microscope we use today. So now let's discuss the parts of a microscope. The important parts of microscope are eyepiece, objectives, stage and mirror. So we keep the specimen. What is specimen? Specimen is the thing we wish to observe. So we place the specimen on the stage. So did you notice the stage here? Yes. So we place the specimen on the stage. And we have to look through the eyepiece. So eyepiece is actually a lens. And there are two other lens. And in some microscope there are more than two lens. And these lens are called as objectives. So the lens in a microscope it uh, works like a magnifying glass okay you will be able to uh, see the specimen uh, larger the specimen will appear larger you can adjust one of the objectives so that the specimen is seen clearly and there is a mirror below the stage it help you to uh, it directs the light okay it directs the light through the specimen so that it help you to see the specimen clearly. In the year 1672, there was a scientist called Anton van Leeuwenhoek. He discovered a single cell organism in a drop of water. And from then onwards, there were many discoveries about a vast number of microorganisms. Next, we are going to revise the structure of the cell. So students, you can turn your books to page number 8. And have a look at the picture of an animal cell and a plant cell in your textbook. Students, a cell is a tiny sac which is surrounded by a thin skin or covering called as membrane. And inside the membrane we have a semi-fluid like substance, a semi-liquid like substance and this is called as cytoplasm. And cytoplasm is mostly of water and it has a few type of salt and protein also. But the most important thing is many tiny structures called as organelles. As you can see in this picture many structures called as organelles. They are suspended in the cytoplasm and each of these organelles they have a specific function. And now let's see what are the functions of these organelles. So before that first let's learn what is cell membrane and what is a cell wall. The cell membrane is also known as plasma membrane. So cell membrane has got another name it is plasma membrane. 
and it has the following functions. So the important functions are first it encloses the various organelles and cytoplasm. So what does the cell membrane do? You can look at the picture of animal cell. So you can see that the cell membrane encloses, okay, it protects or encloses or it boundaries the organelles and the cytoplasm and it gives a definite shape to the cell, okay. The shape to the cell is given by the um, cell membrane and next it regulates the movement of substances into and from the cell. Which means only certain substances are allowed to enter or to leave the cell. So that's why we call the cell membrane as selectively permeable membrane. So selectively permeable membrane means it allows only certain substance to pass through it into the cell. So that's why we call it as selectively permeable. And fourth it protects the contents of the cell. Next. Let's revise about the cell wall. So the plant cell is enclosed by another layer. It is called the cell wall. So a plant cell has a cell membrane as well as a cell wall. And the cell wall is made up of cellulose, a kind of carbohydrate. So the cell wall is made up of a carbohydrate called as cellulose. And the cell wall has various purposes. So what are they? First, it gives a definite shape to the cell and it makes the cell strong and rigid. It protects the cell from injury. And the last one is the cell wall is freely permeable. So I have told you that the cell membrane is selectively permeable which means it allows only certain substances to enter or to leave the cell. Whereas the cell wall is freely permeable which means it allows all the substances to enter the cell and to leave the cell. Next we will see about nucleus. The nucleus is the most important organelle because it is like our brain. It controls all the vital activities of the cell and do you know what is the shape of the nucleus? Yes, you can look at this picture and say. As children, the nucleus is oval or, or spherical or round shaped and the nucleus is enclosed by a membrane. Again, it is enclosed by a membrane called as nuclear membrane and the nucleus is filled with a fluid, a fluid, semi-fluid substance called as nucleoplasm. So, fluid inside the nucleus is nucleoplasm. Plasm and it has got one or two small bodies called as nuclei which is suspended inside the nucleus. So what are the parts inside the nucleus? Yes, first it is covered by a outer covering called as nucleo, nuclear membrane and inside the nucleo, nuclear membrane is a semi-fluid substance called as nucleoplasm and two or more spherical bodies are floating there inside it they are called as nucleoli and the nucleus also contain fine thread like structures called as chromatin network okay the thread like structure inside the nucleus is called the chromatin chromatin networks so this is very important because the chromatin networks, they get coiled, they come together, they get coiled, they become shorter and thicker and form something called as chromosomes. The chromosomes are very important because it carries a large number of genes. So what are genes? Genes are the organism's hereditary characters. The characters of the parents are usually passed on to their children. It is because of the the hereditary characters which are carried in the genes of the chromosome and every organism has a fixed number of chromosomes. Next we are going to revise about mitochondria. Mitochondria is called the powerhouse of the cell. Have you noticed the mitochondria in your uh, picture? Yes. The mitochondria, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell and 
why we call this as powerhouse of the cell is because they break down glucose and they convert the energy to to a form which can be easily absorbed by our body and which can be easily used by the cells to power all its functions next is plastids plastids are present only in the plant cells so plastids are present only in the plant cells similarly the cell wall is also present only in the plant cells so what are plastids plastids are made up of pigments or food materials so there are three type of plastid first one is chloroplast second is chromoplast and the last is leucoplast so what are chloroplast the plastids that have green pigments they are called as chloroplast and this green pigment inside the chloroplast is called as chlorophyll so have you seen all the leaves are in green color it is due to the presence of chlorophyll which gives them their green color and the chloroplast also help in photosynthesis how do they help they trap down the sunlight that is solar energy and with this energy they convert carbon dioxide and water to form food and chloroplast are therefore not only essential for the survival of plant but they are also essential for the survival of organisms that depend on the plants for food that is the heterotrophic organisms okay so we have seen the chloroplast are plastids that have the green pigment called as chlorophyll and this chlorophyll pigment it gives green color to the plant next we'll see about chromoplast so what are chromoplast all the colored pigments other than green that we see in the plants are to or produced by chromoplast so other than green color all the other colored pigments are produced by the chromoplast for example the red color of tomato orange color yellow color of flowers and ripe fruits are all produced by these colored plastids that's why plastids are present only in the plants and last one is leucoplast so the leucoplast are colorless plastids they are not uh, they doesn't have any color the leucoplast are found in the roots the seeds and the underground stems like potato and ginger so they do not give any color then what is their job the important function is to store the food substances for example the leucoplast in the potatoes store food substances in it next we'll revise about vacuoles so what are vacuoles vacuoles are structures that look like sacs or cavities and uh, these structures contain a fluid called as cell sap and this fluid is comprised of water sugar salt and food materials and even waste materials usually plant cell they have uh, either one or two large size vacuole like as you can see in this picture okay the size of vacuole in a plant cell is usually larger why it is very larger is once the cell is mature the it once the cell grows the vacuole also grow along with the cell and it, it will become larger and larger as more food and water and waste is accumulated in the vacuole and once the cell is mature the vacuole will take up most of the space of the cell okay it will push the all the other org organelles and cytoplasm and nucleus to one side so it is clearly given in your picture plant cell picture you can see the vacuole is very large and it has all almost pushed all the other organelles to one side of the cell and the functions of the vacuoles are it maintain the shape of the cell it maintains the balance of water in the cell it store store chemicals food water and salt and usually animal cell have very small vacuoles but plant cell have larger vacuoles and amoebas they have vacuoles to store food and lastly we are going to revise about cell division so why is cell division needed for us it is required for reproduction growth maintenance of the body and healing of the wounds so do you know that our life starts as a single cell and the single cell is formed by the 
fusion of the male cell and the female cell and the single cell formed is called a zygote later the single cell divide into two cell two become four and four become eight and this is how the cell division goes on and the zygote develop into a embryo the embryo develops into a baby and baby finally becomes a adult and everything is because of cell division and new cells formed by cell division they constantly they are replaced by the they replace the dead and damaged cells in our body so children constant replacement of the dead cells and damaged cells happen because of new cells which are formed by the cell division so students in this session we have learned we have learned about the cell and discovery of cell about microscope and about the structure of cell and lastly about cell division so your assignment for today's session will be learn and copy lesson 2 notes neatly in your class work notebooks students whenever you get time you read the lesson and complete the book exercise in pencil and the answers for the book exercise will be sent to you in the evening you can check it you can counter check it and write the correct answers thank you children have a nice day